Hey, Harold Reed here, and welcome to another episode of the Ice Talks, where we implement change every day. Hey, Harold Reed here, also known as HRJR, your Motive Actional Coach. If you don't know what Motive Action means, motive plus action equals results, and results equals success. Today, I want to talk to you about something that I've spoken about in past uh, speeches that I've done publicly. Uh, I even think I wrote about this in one of my books, but uh, I, I felt the need to share this with you new listeners who may not have heard or read what I'm about to share today. Uh, one of my mentors in the arena of personal development and self-help is a man by the name of Zig Ziglar. This is like one of the godfathers of motivational speaking, personal development, and self-help. The same way people in the comedian sphere say somewhere along the lines, you know, if you're any good, somewhere along the lines, you've had to steal something from Richard Pryor. Uh, In the motivational realm, somewhere along the lines, if you're worth the assault somewhere, you you had to steal something. Uh, or incorporate something that you learn from Zig Ziglar, and he's definitely one of my mentors in this in this arena. Never had the opportunity to meet him, but I have conversed with his son, uh, Tom Ziglar. Anyway, one of the things that he talks about is something called stinking thinking. Stinking thinking is that negative voice inside your head, that negative voice that always messes you up. And when you're not in tune with knowing that you're engaged in stinking thinking, what tends to happen is when bad things come your way that you know in your heart that you are responsible for, but you're not in tune with your heart. So you deny it and you want to blame other people. This person made me mad. This person made me do this. The the, the, the economy made me yada, yada, yada. Right. And so. What we have to understand is that stinking thinking comes from us, exists in us, and causes us to not be our better selves, all right? Stinking thinking is what keeps you from doing the things that you know good and well you are capable of doing. Stinking thinking is what psychs you out. From from achieving your goals. Stinking thinking is what gets in the way of you receiving your blessings. You receiving those things that you know you deserve, but you don't give yourself the credit and the power to go after and get it. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. When I became a police officer, I I became a police officer in 2000, August of 2000. And somewhere, I want to say about maybe three, no, about maybe six months on the job. Uh, Yeah, it's about six months on the job. uh, A friend of mine, one of my old, my dad, my father's old friends, I happened to be the chief of investigators for the county prosecutor's office. And he used that little connect in order to get me a meeting with the chief of of investigators for the prosecutor's office. And so when I go to this meeting, I'm sitting there in the room with the gentleman, the chief and, uh, you know, a couple of his other, you know, uh, uh, senior lieutenants or what have you. And... They're hitting me with questions. Have you done this? Have you done undercover work? Have you, you know, uh, done any detective work? Have you? And I guess they knew. I mean, I'd only been on the job less than a year. So, I mean, my answers were no, 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 sir. No, 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 sir. No, sir. And when it was done, like, thank you for coming and uh, we'll be in touch. And what happened to me was stinking, stinking thinking went to work on me, in me. It was, it was, it was, I, I couldn't, I couldn't escape my own stinking thinking. I, I, I couldn't, and, and mind you, I hadn't found, you know, my, my path to the personal development and the self-help, not to the extent that I, you know, had made the changes that have gotten me where I am today. This is just one of the lessons leading up to it. So stinking thinking was inside me. It was working, it was working overtime. And, 
Long story short, I wound up sending a letter to the chief investigator thanking him for the time he took to meet with me and informing him that I think with the lack of experience that I had, it was perhaps better that I stayed where I was. And I took myself out of contention for that investigator's position that I was interviewing for. And I got a phone call a couple days later from a friend of mine who, is, who was also an investigator with the county prosecutor's office. And I, me and this guy, I won't say his name, but we, we, we knew each other for years when we were doing mall security work, you know. And he calls me and he's like, dude, why'd you, why'd you, you, know, pull, why'd you pull yourself out? Chief told me you pulled yourself out. I was like, yeah, man, I, you know, everything he asked me to have ever done, I said, no, I, I mean, I just have, I didn't have any experience in anything. I mean, I just got on the job and my man told me that's exactly why he was going to hire you. That's exactly why he was going to hire you because you didn't have any bad habits that we would have to break you out of. You took yourself out the game. And I was like, wow, I never thought of it like that. And here's the funny thing. My dumb behind, even I, I got brave with it. I got brave with it. I went back and I asked the man for another interview. And I guess as a courtesy to my dad and everything, he gave me a second interview. But I, I, I never heard from him after that second interview. And, and, I, and I couldn't be mad at him. I couldn't be mad at him. You know, and he asked me, he's like, why, well, why'd you send me the letter in the first place? I was like, I, I just felt ashamed that I didn't have any of the experience you were asking for. I just, so what made you come back? What made you come back? I, I figured, you know, you talk to your, you talk to your friend so-and-so. I was like, well, yeah. I was like, yeah, well, you know, so you understand that you had a chance. I was like, yeah, well, well, thank you for coming out and, you know, we'll consider it and we'll get back in touch with you. And here, here we are, uh, 18 years, 17 years later, and that, that phone call still never came. And my man has since, you know, the chief investigator, he has since retired, obviously, you know. But I learned through that incident, through that experience, that you can have do and become anything you want provided you're willing to put forth the work necessary in order to achieve it. I always say that's my number one cardinal rule. But in the course of putting in that work, understand that uh, you're going to encounter obstacles. You're going to encounter frustration. You're going to encounter setbacks. The universe is going to throw all of that in front of you. But the trick, now here's, here's some game right here. Understand, I'm about to drop some real secretive science on you. The game is this. The secret to the game is this. One of the things that the universe will use against you is you. I always say, because I learned from this experience, that it's not the people who are talking to us. It's not that one person that you think you can confide in that, you know, tells you that talks you to tell, talks negative to you and talks you out of your dreams and your goals. It's not the people that are talking to you who talk you out of your dreams and goals. It is always 10 times out of 10. That's right. I said 10 times out of 10. It is always the person who is talking in you who talks you out of your dreams and your goals. Always that person. Without a doubt, it is always that person. You could have 25, 100 people. You could have all the people in the world telling you what you can't do. You could have a million people tell you what you can't do. You could post a video on YouTube and you could have everybody on there, thumbs down, tell you it sucks. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Why are you even bothering? But it's only one person who can can encourage you 
to put that video out there. It's only one person who can encourage you to, to do whatever it is that you want to do, to, to make that demo tape of you singing, to go to that uh, American Idol audition or The Voice or America's Got Talent or whoever, all right? There was a guy by the name of, I think his name was William Hung, all right? I think that was his name. This guy went on American Idol singing a Ricky Martin song, She Bangs, She Bangs, and, you know, he was a nerdy-looking Asian guy, buck teeth, and the typical, stereotypical, nerdy-looking Asian guy. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be insulting. That's what the guy looked like, right? But he got on there, and he was horrible in terms of actually singing as a, a singer, but it was good comedy for the show, and the dude wound up making a million dollars and some change just performing that horrible song. He did videos and all kinds of stuff. Why? Because he didn't allow stinking thinking to get inside his head. He didn't allow stinking thinking to stand in his way. As ridic- That man even got up there and, and told Simon, uh, who I think at the time this is uh, Simon Cowell, Paul Abdul, and Randy Jackson, he had the nerve, the gall, to stand up there after he totally butchered this song to sit up there and say, and I have no formal training either. <laughs> no ish. <laughs> but he didn't allow stinking thinking to get in his way. See? We can't allow stinking thinking to get in our way. And before I wrap this up, let me tell you this. All right? Like I said, it's always the person talking in you, not the people who are talking to you that talk you out of your dreams and goals. It's always the person that's talking in you. And what you need to know about the people on the outside, who are trying to talk you out of your dreams and your goals, very rarely will you find someone who has succeeded at what you're trying to do or what you're striving to do. Very rarely will you find someone who has succeeded talk you out of doing what it is that you want to do. If, if you want to become big in real estate, If you want to become big at entertainment, if you want to become big at speaking, if you want to become big at journalism, if you want to become big in the martial arts, if you want to become big in sports, it is very rarely that someone who has succeeded in that area of interest for you will try and talk you out of it. In fact, if and when these people who have succeeded in these areas, if they see you putting in the work, if they see you giving it everything you got, you know what? They will respect your hustle. As we say in the, in, in the, in the black community, they will respect your gangster. They will respect your hustle. They will respect your gangster and they will help you. All right. The union is a, there's an old saying that goes, God helps those who help themselves. All right. The universe, God, the universe, whatever you deem your higher power to be, as long as you're putting in the work necessary, God, the universe, whatever you deem your higher power to be, will always put resources and people of make them available to you. I, I, this, this is, it, it is the truth. You don't have to believe me. It'll, life will show it to you. If there's something that you truly want to do, don't let stinking thinking get in the way. Do not Allow yourself to talk yourself out of what it is that you say you want to do. All right. See, that's how the universe works. That is how life works. When you say you want to do something, you want to have something, you want to become something, you want to achieve something. All right. You can't just say that I want it and get it because you want it. No, you're going to have to put forth the work necessary in order to achieve it. And that is not going to be easy. It's going to be a process. And as I say, always, all processes take time. You're going to be tested. You're going to have to prove yourself worthy that what you want, you deserve to have. You're going to have to prove yourself worthy. You're going to be tested. And like I said, before I wrap this up, like I said, keep this in mind at all times. One of the greatest tricks that the universe, God, the universe, whatever you deem your higher power to be, one of the greatest tricks that they will use against you is you. Don't allow stinking thinking. To stink up your future. Hey, this is Harold Reed, and thank you for listening to another episode of the Ice Talks, where we implement change every day. 